So I wanted to talk about Anthony Comstock. This, and, and the reason why is because I'm expecting we are going to see a lot more legislation or a lot more, excuse me, litigation uh, coming around the Comstock Act. Uh, the Comstock Act is, is uh, well, let me tell you about Anthony Comstock, first of all. He died in 1915. He was, the, uh, uh, he was a Civil War Union soldier. He was the postmaster for New York City. Um, and and, and I, I, frankly, I think it's important that we learn about him. Uh, Anthony Comstock was a mama's boy who hated sex. His mother died when he was 10 years old, and the shock uh, apparently never let it, left him. I mean, you know, women who didn't live up to her ideal uh, were, in his mind, his open and declared enemies, as were pornography, masturbation, and abortion. He was so ignorant about sex he spent decades scouring the country collecting pornography, which he enthusiastically shared with men, men in Congress, har harassing loose women. Uh, for example, he visited a belly dancing show. Uh, there, there was a craze at the time. This was in 1893. And uh, he went to Chicago to the Cairo Theater during the World's Fair of 1893. And there was a belly dancing show, and he demanded that the show be shut down. Uh, Amy, Amy Sohn wrote a book about him. It, 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 was, it was titled the, the Man Who Hated Women. It's, a, it's the, probably the, the best uh, official biography of Anthony Comstock out there. I mean, uh, not authorized biography because it was written long after he died. But um, anyhow, this is what she wrote about, uh, you know, when he showed up at, in 1893 at the, at, the, at the World's Fair in Chicago to try to shut down the belly dancing. Uh, she wrote, quote, despite natural, national controversy and Comstock's intervention, ultimately the only alteration made to the fair's belly dancing was costuming. The, the dancers swapped their gauze blouses for thin woolen undershirts. The vice hunter had lost in Chicago, but he would not forget the dancers and would have four of them arrested and fined when they came to New York that winter. New York, after all, was Comstock land. Comstock lobbied for and shepherded through Congress a law passed on March 3, 1873, titled An Act for the Suppression of Trade in and Circulation of Obscene Literature and Articles for Immoral Use. We call this today the Comstock Act, and it is still on the books. And that's why I'm telling you, this is something that we need to be paying attention to because Sam Alito and Clarence Thomas are paying attention to it. And it may get a whole lot hotter, particularly now that it looks like the Supreme Court is going to say, in this uh, Miffa Pristone case, the Supreme Court is going to say, you know, these doctors did not have standing. There were, the, and this was the big argument that was made this morning before the Supreme Court was that um, there is, an, there's an amendment to one of our, one of our laws, and it was named after the politician who who placed it, and my apologies, it was mentioned this morning, I recognize that I don't recall the name of the politician, but anyhow, in our law right now, our federal law, there is a provision that's, that explicitly says that a physician may refuse to provide services if it conflicts with their conscience. I mean, it's just, you know, straightforward, it's clear. And it, can you ask him to turn the volume down? And, and um, it's, I lost my place. I'm sorry. Okay. And, and, and so basically what the Supreme Court was saying was, you know, these people have no, no standing to, to challenge this. They're, they're saying that they're being injured because they may have to complete an abortion that somebody started with the myth of Bristone. Well, you know, that's all well and good, but they don't have to complete that abortion. They can simply say, I object under current federal law. So if the Supreme Court rules the way that I think that they're going to, in probably what will be a seven to two decision, that the uh, Hippocratic doctors don't have standing to bring this case and therefore it never should have been heard in the first place, which is the easiest way to avoid all the issues here, then I guarantee you within six months to a year, you are going to see another case being brought by these same people, only what they're going to say this time is, we're suing you, federal government, because you are refusing to uh, enact, you're refusing to enforce federal law that's already on the books. So with, you know, understanding that in all probability this is coming, 
what does the Comstock Act say? What does the actual language of the law say? Well, let me read it to you. This is from an act for the suppression of trade in and circulation of obscene literature and articles of immoral use, the Comstock Act, 1873. Quote, every obscene, lewd, lascivious, indecent, filthy, or vile article, matter, thing, device, or substance designed, adapted, or intended for producing abortion or for any indecent or immoral use, and every article, instrument, substance, drug, medicine, or thing which is advertised or described in a manner circulated to, or calculated to lead another to use or apply it for producing abortion or for any indecent or immoral purpose, and every written or printed card, letter, circular, book, pamphlet, advertisement, or notice of any kind giving information directly or indirectly where or how or from whom or by what means any of such mentioned matters, articles, or things may be obtained or made, or where or by whom any act or operation of any kind for the procuring or producing of abortion will be done or performed, or how or by what means abortion may be produced, whether sealed or unsealed, and every paper, writing, advertisement, or representation that any article, instrument, substance, drug, medicine, or thing may or can be used or applied for producing abortion or any indecent or immoral purpose, and every description calculated to induce or incite a person to use or apply any such article, instrument, substance, drug, medicine, or thing is declared to be, and here's, here's where it blows up in everybody's face, is declared to be non-mailable matter and shall not be conveyed in the mails or delivered from any post office or by any letter carrier. Now, persons mailing information about abortion or drugs or devices to produce an abortion or for any immoral purpose, which later, by the way, was defined as including uh, birth control and masturbation, which would be pornography, quote, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than five years or both for the first such offense and shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both for each sh such offense thereafter. So here is an absolutely unambiguous law that says that Anything that can be used for any immoral purpose or to produce abortion. Anything that can be used for birth control. Anything that can be used for abortion. Anything that can be used for sexual gratification. You go to prison for five years if you ship it through the U.S. mails. First offense, 10 years, second offense. Now, in 1930... The appeals court for the Second Circuit ruled in Young's Rubber Corp versus C.I. Lee and Company. Now, Young's Rubber Corp was a company that was making rubbers, what they called rubbers back in the day, prophylactics, condoms. And they sued because the Comstock Act, uh, you know, made their, made their products illegal, at least illegal to ship. And the court ruled in this case that, quote, such a construction would prevent mailing to or by a physician of any drug or mechanical device adapted for contraception or abortifacient uses, although the physician desired to use or to prescribe it for proper medical purposes. So as a result of that, the, the law has been amended by Congress four times, but the language that I just quoted to you has never been struck down. And, you know, as Matthew Kaczmarek said, you know, he, he, he's, he, to quote the three judges, this is the appeals court made up of a George W. Bush appointed as a Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals on the Matthew Kaczmarek, the, the court that just sent this to the Supreme Court, right? The appeals court made up of a George W. Bush appointee and two Trump appointees had earlier ruled in their preliminary finding to hear the case that they disagreed with the Biden administration's assertion that, to quote the three judges, quote, the Comstock law does not mean what it says it means. So this brings us, to, and keep in mind, you know, Republican Senator Josh Hawley's wife is the one who was leading this 
lawsuit, right, and bringing us to where we're at right now. So in a letter sent to CVS, among other pharmacy chains, Mississippi Republican Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith and eight other Republican senators, Senator Langford, Senator Dane, Senator Braun, Senator Rubio, Senator Marshall, Senator Risch, Senator Crapo, and Senator Blackburn, wrote that the Biden interpretation of the Comstock Act, which is that we don't have to enforce this law, was wrong. Okay, so here we have eight Republican senators in a letter to the pharmacy, to CVS. This letter, and I'll just read to you from the letter. We write to express our support and agreement with 21 state attorneys general, all Republicans, by the way, who have reminded you that federal law 18 U.S.C. 1461-62, the Comstock Act, criminalizes nationwide using the mail or interstate shipment by any express company or common carrier to send or receive any drug that is, quote, adapted, designed, or intended to, to, for producing abortion, end quote, end quote. So you've got eight Republican senators who have already threatened CVS Pharmacy with years in prison for simply shipping mifepristone to their retail stores. This is, uh, is Cindy Hyde-Smith, again, Mississippi Republican Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith, continued to write that uh, the Comstock Act does not protect CVS or any other individual or entity from being prosecuted within the five-year statute of limitations for the illegal mailing or interstate shipment of abortion drugs, even for conduct that occurs today. Now, the lawyer for the Republicans defending Kaczmarek before the Fifth Circuit, that was Aaron Hawley, the wife of Republican Senator Josh Hawley in Missouri, you know, went so far as to assert before the court that even physicians and pharmacies should not be able to receive mifepristone or any other drug that could produce an abortion in the mail or via FedEx and UPS. She writes, uh, and this is, you know, in her brief, what the Comstock Act says is that it is improper to mail things that induce or cause abortion, which is precisely the action the FDA took in 2021 when it permitted the mailing of abortion drugs. So, I mean, this is no idle threat. Dan Diamond, the Washington Post reporter, uh, wrote about anti-abortion anti activist Mark Lee Dixon, excuse me, who has helped several cities around the country put into law local versions of the Comstock Act. And he told him, quote, if a future president were to enforce these federal statutes, then they could shut down every abortion facility in America, which is true. They could also end all uh, birth control in the United States because this bill is still on the books. This law is still law. And the Republicans have made it very clear. I mean, these eight Republicans or nine Republicans of Cindy Hyde-Smith have all said, you know, <laughs> you, try to, you try to take down the Comstock Act, we're gonna stop you with a filibuster. So stay tuned, my friends. I, I believe, you know, as much as this may look like a victory and we'll know in three or four months, I believe this is just round one.